Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service for the Lebanon Church of Christ in Dresden, Tennessee. Uh, this pre-recorded service is being made available for Sunday, uh, November 3rd, uh, 2024. And it is our Fall Family Day at Lebanon. Uh, you may be watching this this morning, uh, having fallen back and gotten an extra hour of sleep. Uh, if you plan to join us in person today, uh, we'll be at the building at 9 a.m. Uh, and then 10 a.m. for our worship. And then we'll be having a fellowship meal uh, at the Dresden Civic Center following our morning worship. That'll start about 11, 11, 15. Um, by the time we get there, maybe 11, 30. Uh, and we'll have that time of fellowship together, and there will not be an evening service uh, at Lebanon today. Uh, that is uh, today when you're seeing this, uh, November 3rd. Uh, it's our Fall Family Day. We have got lots of uh, fun things planned. Uh, in addition to our Bible classes and our normal worship, we'll have some games for kids. Uh, we're going to have some great uh, time of fellowship with soup and chili uh, at the Dresden Civic Center following our morning worship. And we would invite you, uh, if you're here in Northwest Tennessee, to be with us uh, in person. Uh, we have obviously been working on this for several weeks and, and leading up to this, uh, praying through it. We've had folks out at the building uh, all day yesterday setting up and, and getting um, uh, things ready. Uh, I know many of our members have invited folks to be with us in person. Uh, and we hope you will be with us in person today if you have that opportunity. Uh, we also know that we have folks who are traveling, uh, folks who are dealing with sickness, uh, folks who have uh, procedures coming up this week and are trying to stay home and stay healthy, uh, getting ready for that. And so we're making our service as we do each week uh, available online uh, for those with that need. Uh, and we're glad that you can be here with us uh, today. As far as our online uh, service goes, we'll follow our usual uh, format that we have from week to week. Uh, I'll begin with a word of prayer uh, here in just a moment, uh, and then we will uh, look into God's Word together. Uh, we're going to be um, sharing a lesson today at the building uh, from Psalm 34, uh, and it's going to be centered around the idea of thanking God in every season, uh, and we'll share that lesson online here as well. Uh, following our lesson here online, we'll take a moment, and stop, pause, uh, kind of regroup and reflect. Uh, and then I'll offer a couple of prayers if you're taking the Lord's Supper uh, at home uh, or in the nursing home, hospital, whatever situation you may be in, a hotel room watching uh, with us today. Uh, following that, we'll have some announcements uh, and be dismissed uh, in prayer. Again, uh, if you're watching this early uh, and you still have time to be with us for class at 9, worship at 10, uh, we would love to see you today. Also, if, if you're a person who worships elsewhere and maybe sometimes joins us on Sunday night uh, or sometimes uh, just follows along here online uh, during the week, it just as kind of an extra uh, encouragement, uh, please let folks know uh, that we won't be having an evening service uh, tonight. That'll just affect tonight, uh, Sunday, November 3rd. Um, after our time of fellowship today, we'll clean up uh, and have prayer together and, and be there together at the Civic Center, and then we will not meet at the building tonight. We'll have a note on the door uh, to let folks know, uh, but there may be people who uh, don't see social media uh, or don't see uh, this recording that you know uh, who you may need to reach out to, and if that's the case, uh, please help us out with that uh, and let them, uh, let them know. We've been announcing it, uh, but sometimes those things can get uh, overlooked or we get the date wrong or something like that. So uh, let folks know 9 and 10 today, uh, no evening service. With that being said, uh, and with Fall Family Day uh, on our minds and on our hearts, uh, we want to go ahead and begin our online time here today uh, with the word of prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this day and for uh, this new season of life that we find ourselves in, this new month and uh, this new week that lays before us. Um, Lord, we're very uh, excited for the many activities that we have planned for our worship today in person. Uh, we're thankful for all the people who have gone into the decorating and the cooking and the preparing for worship and preparing for our children's classes and um, those who have uh, cleaned and prepared our building and, and do that for us each week. Lord, we're just thankful for every person who's a part of our local church family. And we're thankful also that we have this reach online that's touching people's lives that we might never get the chance to know in person, uh, at least not initially. And so we give thanks for that. We're thankful for the beautiful weather uh, that we're expecting. And uh, we give thanks for everyone who's getting up extra early uh, and uh, getting ready and making preparation uh, so that we can enjoy that day together. And we ask that it would be uh, a blessing to our church family and that we would glorify you in all we do. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, for those who are troubled, uh, we pray for those who are struggling. Uh, we pray for um, a couple of members of our congregation uh, 
uh, who we'll name uh, in our announcement time, and others who are taking treatments, who are having surgeries upcoming, procedures upcoming, people who are taking physical therapy, people who are struggling uh, in any number of ways, Lord, uh, people that are recovering from recent operations. Uh, we just ask that your hand would be with them, that your grace and your mercy uh, would be felt by them, and that the people around them that are helping them, the medical professionals and family and friends and those supporting them uh, could be a source of encouragement this week. We pray, Lord, uh, in this season, especially for our country, and as we are looking at the election on Tuesday, not only the presidential election, but uh, many elections locally and up and down the ballot at the state level, we just ask that um, we would all um, behave in ways that would glorify you, uh, that regardless of the outcome, that we would point to you and put you first. Um, help us to uh, be able to live and commune with our neighbors in ways not only that we could influence them for our views, but ultimately that we could influence them uh, and bring them to you, bring them closer to Christ. Lord, we're grateful for those who serve in our community. We're thankful for our teachers and social workers, law enforcement members, emergency workers, uh, social workers, counselors, those who are working in ministry in various ways. Uh, we're thankful for the parents and, and all those who are um, getting up every day and serving, uh, sometimes without attention, uh, sometimes even with criticism. And, and Lord, we ask that you would strengthen our hands as we seek to serve one another. And by serving one another, let us be uh, serving you. We pray especially for uh, our missionary families that we support at Lebanon. We pray for those who are uh, working in different countries throughout the world where the church is not present or certainly not strong. Um, we pray, Lord, for those who are here in the States, who are in places where um, their conditions are harsh, uh, whether uh, the, the climate of the place uh, or the, the, the people there being um, less exposed to the gospel than we are in our area. Uh, we ask for hearts that would be open uh, to hear this message. We pray for those uh, like the Carter family who are working in prison ministry. Uh, we pray for those like the Mosier family who are putting so much content uh, online and seeking to reach unreached peoples uh, in that way, seeking to, to open hearts to the truth of your word. Uh, and Lord, regardless of, of uh, what forms these missions take, whether they're uh, physically present, like the Taylors in Japan or the Smiths in Alaska, um, we pray for those um, who are touched by their efforts, uh, the individuals that they meet, the people that they worship with, the people that they seek to teach, the people that they seek to influence. And we ask that you would strengthen these families we pray also for those who are um, training for ministry at Bear Valley and Freed Hardman and other works that we've had a part in through the years. Um, we just ask that you would continue to have those places where people can uh, be prepared to serve you better and more fully from day to day. We're most grateful for uh, the blessing of Christ, for the ability that we get uh, day in and day out to live as he lived and serve as he served, the opportunities that we get to show his love and compassion and kindness to others. And we pray that that never be uh, tied just to special events or special days or to our Sunday worship, but that be something that goes with us each and every day that we live. We're thankful for the forgiveness that we find in Christ and through Christ, that we are not only forgiven of our sin, but given uh, the strength and the comfort uh, through your word and through your spirit that we can continue to live by faith and grow and mature from day to day. Be with us and bless us throughout the events of this day and throughout our time here online. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, we're glad that you are here uh, and glad that you can join in uh, in our time uh, today. As I mentioned, uh, it's Fall Family Day. We'll be at the building here uh, in a little bit and uh, be able to uh, enjoy uh, this day of worship together and, and look forward to that. One of the things that uh, we began when we started Fall Family Day several years ago, or Fall Family Sunday, uh, Fall Family Fun Day, we tried uh, some variations on the names through the years. Uh, but one of the ideas, of course, is it kind of falls usually. Uh, we try to do it in late October, early November. Uh, there's a lot going on, obviously, in the world um, in this time. We think about Halloween and, of course, Thanksgiving and Christmas to come. Uh, football is going on. Basketball has started up. Uh, soccer and other sports are ongoing. Um, and, and sometimes we can lose uh, or lose sight of uh, the spiritual component that we're supposed to, supposed to have uh, in our lives. I think sometimes in busy seasons and hectic seasons, 
uh, it can become even more difficult to stop, to pause, uh, to give thanks for what we have. And so we have this, this day set aside um, to celebrate the blessings that we have as a church family uh, and really as a community. Uh, our community's been through a lot, obviously, in recent years uh, with the tornado um, and, and other um, uh, losses of individuals and people that were precious to us and precious to our church family. And we're a blessed people uh, at Lebanon. We're a blessed people where we live. And we want to give thanks for those blessings. Uh, we want to offer praise for those uh, blessings. And we recognize ultimately that if God is for us, uh, as Paul would write in Romans chapter 8, you know, who can be against us? If God is on our side, uh, we can have the confidence that we need, uh, the strength that we need to keep going. Uh, but one of the reasons that I believe um, worship um, whether that is our corporate worship together or our daily uh, devotional practices that we encourage, uh, times that we share together online or times that we share together uh, in one-on-one -on -one Bible study, uh, whatever the case may be, um, the parts of our day, the parts that of our week uh, that draw us uh, toward God, um, we ultimately use those as, as touchstones and as reminders of how we can focus on God. Uh, and really focus on his gifts no matter the season. And you know, we think about November as, as a month of thanks. Uh, a lot of us are uh, maybe writing down things that we're thankful for uh, this month, or we're keeping up with maybe a challenge online, or we're doing a, a daily devotional. I've seen lots of folks uh, sharing those on social media and talking about those uh, in our class time and, and even passing books back and forth uh, at the building that we've used in the past. And so today, um, whatever season we find ourselves in personally, uh, whether we're feeling uh, that kind of November thankfulness or whether we're really kind of in a desolate season, uh, a despairing season, a troubled season, we're looking around and we're seeing the darkness in the world. Uh, we want to recognize that no matter what season we find ourselves in, uh, God is worthy uh, and worthy to be praised. Our whole uh, lesson today is going to center in, and I'll mention some other verses, uh, but in Psalm 34, uh, Psalm 34 is where we will be uh, both here online today uh, and at the building uh, in a little while. And Psalm 34 is a Psalm of David, and it is written with, and we're very um, blessed to have the description uh, that's found there, that's found in the older manuscripts as well, um, that talk about uh, the circumstances in which this Psalm uh, was written. Uh, Psalm 34 uh, is sometimes um, described as being about the blessedness or the happiness of one who trusts in God. But the description is a Psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech uh, who drove him away and he uh, departed. Now, that's very odd. Um, it's a very obscure story, really, in the overall uh, life of David. Uh, but it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 21. And uh, this is after David has killed Goliath. He's been anointed uh, to become the next king of Israel uh, by Samuel the prophet. But Saul is still king. And Saul is uh, chasing after David, seeking to murder David, seeking to kill David. So David, uh, you know, will not take his throne. Uh, David is seeking to avoid a one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, confrontation uh, with Saul. David has been chased away from his uh, city. Uh, from his friend, uh, Saul's son, Jonathan, uh, from his own family. And he finds himself, strangely enough, in um, Philistia. He finds himself in the land of the Philistines. And he is there. And um, when he arrives, uh, there's kind of this moment of like, why is David here? And, uh, you know, there's obviously some tension. Uh, Goliath was from Gath, uh, this same city. Uh, the Philistine champion, David had killed him just a couple of chapters uh, before and had been hailed as this great uh, destroyer of the Philistine army. And so David pretends madness. He pretends that he is out of his mind. Uh, he obviously has been at war with the Philistines. Saul is trying to kill him. There's tons of stress that he's under. Uh, but he is not, in fact, mad. Um, he's not, in fact, insane, but he pretends this so that the king of the Philistines will just kind of drive him away rather than arresting him or putting him to death. Uh, he just says, oh, this man's in such bad shape. I just send him on his way. And David ends up in a cave. Uh, and in that next chapter, this is probably where uh, the beginning of this psalm uh, is formed. He's looking back on that experience of how God spared his life through some very uh, bizarre events. Um, he's a hero, and then he's portrayed as the villain, then he's portrayed as a madman, 
uh, he is, uh, because of his actions and David's deception, other people, including innocent people, have suffered. And so there's a lot of confusing seasons happening uh, in his life. And it's in the midst of that that he writes uh, this psalm. I want us to notice uh, some distinct movements in this psalm, and it's 22 verses. Uh, we'll probably read it at the building together, uh, but here online, I'd invite you to read through the whole thing, uh, but I want to highlight um, some portions that I think are particularly uh, important for us as we think about kind of the background uh, and the fact that David is writing this as someone who already, even as a young man, has been through some very distinct uh, and yet interlocking seasons of life where he has seen God's uh, protection and provision. I want to read through verses uh, 1 through uh, 7 and make a couple of observations. Again, this is David's voice. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 34 and verse 2. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. First thing I want to uh, notice in this psalm is that really any season, any moment, any time in our lives is a season, is a moment, is a time uh, to praise the Lord. You'll notice how David begins. Uh, it's about him in verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be uh, in my mouth. Now, if we know that background, that he has been the hero and then the hunted, the fugitive, he's had to pretend uh, to be insane, to escape from uh, enemies, he's surrounded, and he's writing this most likely encamped in a cave, or right outside of a cave, um, beleaguered, um, driven out, uh, desolate. You know, we've talked a lot in our studies before about wilderness places, and David is certainly in one. And yet, this psalm begins, I will bless the Lord at all times. Um, David knew what it was like to be on top. He knew what it was like to be on the very bottom, and he says, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. It begins personally, but if you notice, just in verses 2 and 3, it moves to community. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Even though my circumstances are tough, uh, I'm in hardship, I'm boasting in the Lord. Notice verse uh, 2 in the second portion. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Uh, together. Praise begins personally, but it very soon uh, moves to this invitation to communal praise. Think about the times that this happens in Scripture. Um, I think especially about Luke chapter 15, uh, the man who finds the lost sheep, the woman who finds the lost coin, the father who has the prodigal son uh, returned home to him safe and sound. They are excited, they're enthusiastic, they're joyful about this restored a situation, this restored relationship, but they invite others into the celebration. My personal praise, my personal thanksgiving, my personal joy at being a child of God and being in God's presence should always overflow uh, into the people around me. One of the things I love about our worship uh, at Lebanon uh, is something that happens really before our formal worship um, begins uh, each week, and I'm sure it'll happen today, uh, Lord willing, when we get there, um, we'll be coming in, and I usually, I, I try as much as possible to check on folks that I know are hurting or people who may be dealing with difficult things, you know, leading up to Sunday in case there's a special need. But sometimes something good has happened. Maybe uh, something happened, you know, a, a grandchild, an adult grandchild got engaged on Saturday night, or uh, someone has found out they're having a baby, or uh, someone's team won, you know, at the last minute. Uh, one of our uh, young kids will come in and say, our team won last night or our team won yesterday, the soccer game or softball game or, or whatever. Um, it's this idea of community. We have joy and we have struggles too, but we have joy and we have things that we want to share with one another. And whenever we're together, uh, I don't want to just be in my praise uh, as, as important as that is. 
I want to share that. I want to bring that into community. Uh, the Lord has blessed me in all times, uh, David says. But now come magnify, come lift up, come exalt the Lord uh, with me. Um, when I know that I am redeemed, when I know that I'm in a saved condition, uh, when I know that I have been blessed by God, that should overflow uh, from my personal um, joy and my personal excitement and my personal commitment to God. That should flow into the community. You know, a burden that we share is lessened. A joy that we share is magnified. Um, Paul will write, of course, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 15, uh, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those uh, who weep. Um, part of the, the beauty of God's people, of being a church, a, a group of people that are called together to worship and to, to live life together in community, is that we know each other. Um, the good and the bad, uh, the hard and the good stuff, uh, the good hard stuff even, the, the quirks of personality, the relationships that we have. Um, when I'm going through something hard, I need to be able to share that and, and we bear it together. When I'm going through joy and celebrating, we need to be able to share that as well. Uh, the Lord has blessed me, David says. Now come magnify the Lord with me. I want to praise the Lord and I want you to praise the Lord uh, with me. Because we serve an ever-present God. There is no need for uh, a special occasion uh, to magnify him, to praise him, to lift him up. I love our Sunday worship. Um, it's one of the highlights of my week, even though it's busy and hectic, and a lot of times it's the one who's, who's preaching and teaching. It can be hard to focus and to concentrate because uh, we're trying to, to check on others and care for others. Um, it's still one of the highlights of my week. I love it when we sing together. I love it when we pray together. I love it when people come in and, and they share, you know, so-and-so is, is having a surgery this week. Can we pray about that? Or so-and-so is having treatments and they're really struggling. Can we pray about that? Or uh, someone in our family is, is going through a hard time, a divorce or dealing with addiction. Can, can we talk about that? Can we pray about that? And we take those things, not just to one another, as important as that is, but we take them to the Lord. Any season is a time for that. Not just on Sunday, not just on Fall Family Day, not just when we come together formally as a church, but in any and every season, we have a reason to praise the Lord and to share that praise uh, and that joy uh, and even those hardships with uh, one another. Um, Jesus, when he's talking to the woman of Samaria in John chapter 4, the woman that we know as uh, the woman at the well, um, when they get kind of to the, the nitty-gritty of her situation in her life, she very uh, much like we would do, tries to change the subject and talk about worship. Uh, you know, the Jews say we have to worship in Jerusalem. We, you know, our, our fathers, our ancestors worshiped here on this mountain. Um, you know, this is, this is what matters, like where we worship and how we worship. These were the divisions of their day, just as there's divisions uh, much in our world at times. And Jesus shuts all that down. Uh, he shuts all that down by saying, you know, God is seeking those who worship in spirit, those who worship uh, in truth. It's not going to be a physical location. It's not going to be one certain group of people uh, because of their ethnicity or because of where they live or because of the language that they speak. All people uh, who are filled with God's spirit and are aware of the truth of God's word, uh, they can worship anywhere. Um, that's one of the beautiful things about New Testament worship um, the idea that, that in this age that we've been given to live in, uh, and I, I have this globe here. I, I noticed last week I had moved it over a little bit and it was out of the frame, but it's here every week. And I, I try to think about, um, particularly back when uh, the Mosier family was in New Zealand there. Um, and of course now we have Alaska and we have Japan uh, as well. The idea that, that everywhere people are praising God, any season, any place, uh, is a season to praise the Lord. David reminds us uh, of that. Even in the cave, even in the lowest point, it's a time to praise the Lord. And I think it's also, and this is kind of the verse we've used as a, as a theme for today uh, with Fall Family Day in verse 8. It's also good to remember that uh, we thank God, not just by uh, the, the acts of worship that we undertake on Sunday, but we thank God also and we appreciate and we glorify Him uh, through enjoying the creation that he has made. Let's look at verse 30, uh, excuse me, uh, Psalm 34 and, and verse 8. Uh, verse 8. Oh, taste and see 
that the Lord is good, and blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want for those who fear him. Young lions may suffer hunger, uh, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any uh, good uh, thing. Taste and see uh, that the Lord is good. Those are sensory words. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, today, uh, Lord willing, we will have some great uh, food at our fellowship meal uh, after our worship this morning. And we will taste that food. We will see that food. Even before we uh, can see it, we will smell the food. Um, we will we will know that it's there. We will be uh, having anticipation of, of participating in that meal. Uh, you may have prepared something uh, to bring or, or someone that you love that'll be at our in-person service may have prepared something and they'll smell it in their home and it'll be in their car. And, um, you know, we'll just have this feeling of joy. Even at the building this morning as we come in, um, we'll have that ability to, to share in fellowship together. Uh, and it's a sensory thing. I think a lot of times, um, sadly, Christians um, in our in our modern sense have overcorrected in an effort to get away from sensuality or uh, a corrupt use of the senses, whether that's uh, gluttony or sexual immorality or drunkenness. We've swung too far the other way, and we've we've created this um, uh, sense in which we think of um, our senses or enjoying things that are physical uh, as bad. But our senses are gifts um, that we are given, um, and we're given these gifts to experience life and then to praise God for those experiences, to praise him for uh, his goodness, um, to taste and to see that the Lord is good. Um, have you ever been in a situation where someone was describing something that just sounded wonderful to eat, um, and you might even have used the expression, I can almost taste it? You know, they were describing the chocolate chips or they were describing uh, the smell of the coffee or the hazelnut creamer or whatever they were describing. And, and you would say, I can almost taste it. You know, I can, I can remember tasting that before, smelling that before. Um, and it even causes a physical response. That's what worship should feel like. Uh, that's what the experience of glorifying God should feel like. That when we share in that together, um, we're reminded that when we're without it, we lack something. We understand that physical hunger, that physical thirst, indicate a lack in our lives. Um, I pray that no one watching this today has ever been truly, truly uh, hungry to the point of, of um, it being a, a medical problem uh, or thirsty to the point of it being dehydration and a, a serious medical problem. But even if we haven't had those experiences, we know what it's like to hunger. Uh, we know what it's like to have worked out maybe in the yard all day uh, and to be tired, and also we've been working and we've been staying busy, and then we realize I am very, very hungry. Or maybe we've been uh, playing a sport or out on the lake, and we've been in the sun, and we realize I need to drink something. I'm really thirsty. My mouth is dry. Um, I, I feel I feel um, I feel that I need a drink. I need something cold uh, to drink, a Gatorade or water, whatever that is, uh, in order to to quench this thirst to take away this need that my body has uh, for hydration. When God fills our lives, when our desire for God fills our lives, we will hunger and thirst in that way to be with him and to glorify him and to praise him. Jesus will say in the Sermon on the Mount in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 and verse 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they will be filled. I have to want the presence of God like a hungry man wants food. I have to want the presence of God like a thirsty uh, a woman, a thirsty athlete uh, wants that hydration, needs it, craves it, desires it. That is not a sin. Um, that is a sign that we were created with desire. Our desires can be misfocused. Our desires can be misplaced. We can abuse even food or, or drink, certainly. Um, many other desires, of course, can be uh, abused or handled in the wrong way. But desire itself is something that draws us to a need. And ultimately, as someone who's created in God's image, who is trying in my deepest longing to be near to God and back with God and close to God, um, as someone who wants to see the image of God, uh, who wants to bear that image back to him, uh, so to speak, uh, I need to long for that. 
Uh, it needs to feel like an ache. It needs to feel like a hunger. Um, and that hunger is filled um, by worship. That hunger is filled by being in God's presence and by experiencing the good things uh, that he has made. Um, one of the things I think we sometimes uh, forget is that the idea of, of fasting uh, or the idea of, of withdrawing is always meant to be um, counterbalanced with celebration and feasting. Um, we think about breakfast to break the fast. You know, we fasted through the night in our sleep and, and we're breaking that in the morning. Um, the idea of, of, of sharing in those things and celebrating those things, uh, that's present in this, in this psalm. David says, our longing for God needs to be like our longing uh, for food, that it needs to be like our longing to see beauty um, and to experience that in a sensory way. It's super important. Um, I, I think I, I love to read and study uh, as much as most people, probably more than most people. Uh, I love the mental part of faith, but it also has to be something that's experienced, that's lived out. Uh, God's goodness, I can read textbooks about it. Uh, I can know all the verses about it, but it also has to be something uh, that I embrace, that I experience uh, in my own life. Um, and this happens when we see what God has made, what he has created. Um, I think about the beautiful things that we witness day in and day out. The season is so beautiful to me, uh, where we live and being able to see colors changing, um, even to see a great athletic display. Um, I'm so proud of our student athletes and the things they're involved in. Uh, and to see the feats that they do, the bodies that they have that have been made um, in God's image and the way that they have used them uh, for his glory um, to show uh, what they're capable of, uh, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, to see a child and to see a smile and to hear a laugh, uh, to hear a beautiful piece of music, um, to hear a hymn that, that reminds us and, and the blessing of memory. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, the Lord is good. Uh, we don't have to fear that. We don't have to fear celebrating that goodness. We want our desires to be fulfilled in, in ways that are pleasing to him. But desire itself is something that's God-given. Uh, and David invites us to remember that. I want to mention, um, finally, as we're here and looking at this text together, um, this idea that this is not just something that happens when things are good. Um, if we know the context of when this psalm was written, we know that David is tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, even though he's probably not eating that well, uh, even though he's not, you know, uh, faring sumptuously every day, like we think about the rich man in Jesus' parable. This is in a lean season in David's life, and yet he says, the Lord is good to me. The Lord has been good to me. I have experienced the goodness of the Lord. Uh, I have known him. Um, I have... Um, shared time with him and worship with him. I've invited him into the community as I've led worship for others um, and, and assisted others in coming close to God. I believe David's writing was a way of his worship. And yet, even in the dark times, even in the cave moments, um, God is worthy um, of our praise and he is a God who sees and hears us. Let me read the last a couple of stanzas of this psalm and we'll make some closing observations we get in verse 15. David writes, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants, and none of those who trust him will be condemned or put to shame. I want to be um, completely faithful and, and honest to the spirit of the text when I, when I say this, but I think sometimes um, we forget that the people that we think have um, these great stories in Scripture, they have a lot of darkness, too. Uh, David, uh, thankfully, is a very three-dimensional character in Scripture. He, he has good and bad, darkness and light that's brought out. 
but even um, even the people where there's less darkness that's emphasized or maybe we just have less detail about their lives, they went through things, uh, hard, difficult things. Uh, and in a time in which many things that we consider ordinary are easily, um, easily corrected or easily fixed or easily healed, uh, could be life-threatening, deadly, and destructive. Um, David did not write this psalm uh, at the high point of his life. He wrote it reflecting on one of the lowest points of his life, and yet he constantly asserts that the Lord is good, that the Lord is worthy of praise, that the Lord hears the righteous. We need to remember that David in this moment is an anointed king, but he is an outlaw. Um, he's an outcast. He has no kingdom. Uh, he's completely alone uh, at several points in this story, which is very unusual for him. Uh, at this point in his life, he's usually surrounded by wives, or Jonathan is there, or the high priest is there, or Samuel is there. But at, at several points in this narrative, he's alone and fleeing. Um, enemies all around. And yet he still talks about the Lord hearing him and answering him in this moment. I think sometimes um, we base our trust in God or our faith in God too much on our circumstances. And we think, well, if if things were better, I would be better. Um, you know, when I get through this hard patch, then I'm going to get serious about my faith. Or I'm trying to press through a really difficult time at work. I know I need to be more focused on God, more focused on spiritual things. And I'm, and I want to do that, but I need to get through this first. Or I'm struggling in my marriage, or my kids are giving me a hard time, or I'm taking care of aging parents. But if, when I get through this, um, then I'll be able to look back and see where God was good. And I think it's important that we remember that our external circumstances, while they are a huge factor in how we feel, do not determine whether or not God is worthy of praise, do not determine whether or not our need for God is any greater or any less. In every circumstance, God is present and God is worthy uh, of our praise. Um, you know, we tend to think if circumstances were, were, were better, uh, we would have more time. We would have more opportunity. If I wasn't so old, if I wasn't so young, if I wasn't so busy, if I wasn't so lonely, if I wasn't so... And we, we feel this in and we think we would be different. And time and time again, Scripture reminds us that God is present in all of those places. God is present in the hospital room, but God is present on the ball field. God is present when a baby is born, and God is present when a loved one passes away. God is present, and he is always good and worthy to be praised. In thinking about the psalm, David mentions here in verse 18 the idea of the brokenhearted and the crushed in spirit that, that uh, God is lifting them and raising them up and, and is near to them, is close uh, to them. In 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter will say, cast your anxieties or cast your cares on him because he cares for you. A lot of people are anxious right now um, about the economy, about the election, about our safety in the world, about individuals in our lives, about children that we're raising about uh, loved ones that we're caring for who are dealing with sickness or are dealing with addiction. Cast your cares on him. Why? Because he's there and he cares uh, for you. Um, the idea of discouragement. Um, we would lose heart, David says in another psalm, in Psalm 27, unless he believed he, he would have lost heart unless he believed he would see God uh, in the land of the living. Uh, he believed he would see God's goodness. He couldn't see it in that moment, but he believed that he would see it. He believed that God was still there, even though he couldn't see him, couldn't feel him in that moment. Even in despair, even in discouragement, God is there. Paul, when dealing with um, a hardship so difficult, he couldn't even talk openly about it. He just calls it a thorn. We don't know what it was. Um, it's one of the things that, that so many people wonder about and study about. Was it a physical ailment? Was it a spiritual ailment? Was it a relationship? Uh, and there's different arguments to be made for each one. But Paul just said he prayed about it again and again and again. And it made him weak um, in body. It made him weak in spirit. It discouraged him. And in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, he said, I had prayed with the Lord to take it from me. And the Lord said, my strength is sufficient for you. 
Uh, my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Um, the idea that my grace is enough, my grace is sufficient. I'm here with you. It's a burden you're bearing. It's a burden you're going to have to bear. I, I'm not going to take it from you, but I'm going to empower you to bear up under it. I'm going to give you my strength, my all-sufficient strength to carry you through it. I've heard people say, um, and they'll use that same language, uh, whether they recognize that it comes from Paul or not. You know, that child is just a thorn in my side. Uh, or this sickness is just, you know, it's just a burden to me. Uh, or I just can't quit this habit. I just can't quit um, this addiction or this um, this relationship that, that just seems to be involved in a, in a cycle. God is present in each one of those. He is still worthy to be praised. And he promises as we are his children that he will give us sufficient strength, that his grace is enough to bear up under those things. Jesus will say, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Weary and heavy laden, Matthew 11, uh, 28. He wants to bear our burden. He wants us to take his yoke, not the world's yoke, but his yoke, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Jesus will say in John 16 and verse 33, the idea of um, not to be troubled. In this world you have trouble, but never fear. I have overcome the world. In John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Um, Jesus is there when we're troubled. God is present when we're troubled, when we're burdened. And he has overcome, and he will help us to overcome. Even uh, grief, um, doing a graveside service this past week, and reading from the 23rd Psalm, which has been a source of comfort for God's people for 3,000 plus years now since David wrote it. The idea that death is a shadow, um, the valley of the shadow of death, that God goes with us through it, that he strengthens us during it, that he gives us the ability to endure and to come out on the other side. I think about even in our sin, David would write one of his most famous psalms, Psalm 51, when he was confronted about the depth of his sin with Bathsheba, adultery and murder and lies uh, that would bring destruction on his kingdom, bring destruction on his family. Um, he asked the Lord to purge him, to cleanse him. Uh, and he believes that he has been forgiven. And he says, because of this, because you have been gracious to me, I will teach transgressors your ways. My life will be a testimony and a warning uh, to others. And I praise you because of that. Even though I made these choices and I committed these sins and I went astray, you are going to bring something good out of it. You are going to redeem my terrible experience uh, for the benefit of others. And still today, every time that story is told and that psalm is preached and those stories from Second Samuel are repeated, we are reminded and warned. And we're reminded that David got to experience the fact that his own mistakes and shortcomings, as painful as they were to him, became an opportunity to praise uh, the Lord. I think we should remember that um, these experiences that we have are um, sensory. Um, we feel um, these things. We experience taste. We see that the Lord is good. Um, and we feel brokenhearted. Uh, nobody says, I'm thinking about being brokenhearted. They say, I feel brokenhearted. Um, we understand that these things have to be felt. They have to be experienced. And as we come to understand Scripture and the whole story of Scripture, we know that God is with us in each one of those experiences. And ultimately, He's with us through Scripture, but He's with us in and through uh, the person of Christ. Everything praises God. Everything in creation praises God. And God is glorified in the praise of all that He has made. Taste and see that the Lord is good. What does David say? Uh, come magnify the Lord with me. Um, is this your experience? Well, let me tell you about my experience. Uh, I have experienced God, and I will bless him at all times. Um, I'm in the pit. I'm in the cave. But God has been good. God has been faithful, and he will be uh, again. He will continue to be faithful to his people. Wherever you are today, um, wherever you are physically watching this, wherever you are spiritually in your relationship, the invitation is the same. Come and experience, taste and see uh, that the Lord is good. Um, 
There are hard things in life. There are difficult things in life. Things that are bitter. Um, things that we can't see through at the moment. And yet, each experience that we have, if we allow it to, draws us nearer and nearer to God. And the nearer we come to God, the more and more clarity we gain. We don't always gain perfect clarity. In fact, we seldom gain uh, perfect clarity in this life. And yet, the nearer we come to God, the more experiences we have of Him and with Him and in Him, um, the more that we are assured of his goodness and his worthiness of our praise. The invitation that Peter offered on the day of Pentecost uh, to repent and to be baptized, those were to a physical experience. What happened to those people that heard him? They were pricked in the heart. There was a feeling there. Um, yes, it was based on intellectual information, but it was also guilt. It was also contrition. It was also a desire to be made right. And when they felt that, they yelled out, what are we going to do about this? What can we do? And he gave them their response. Wherever you are today, if you understand and appreciate um, these things that we've mentioned in the last few moments, the brokenheartedness, the sinfulness, the sorrow, the grief, please know that the Lord is near uh, and he longs for you to experience him. Um, we would love for you to reach out to us and, and be able to connect you with people, talk with you um, in person if needed, uh, connect you with people in your area if you're watching in some distant place, um, people who can talk with you and pray with you um, and help you uh, to experience the goodness of God. My personal joy in the Lord always has to be manifested in community, shared in community, celebrated in community. And when we do that, he is truly uh, glorified among us. I think that's just a powerful passage. Um, I love the Psalms. Uh, those those of you who worship with us uh, know that. Um, but I, I think that that is a, an important thing for us to remember, um, that we sense God's goodness, um, that we can enjoy his goodness and celebrate his goodness, uh, even when our own circumstances are not always good. Um, it's good to be reminded of that. If you're watching with us here online and going to be taking the Lord's Supper with us, uh, go out and uh, go ahead and be taking out your packet or your uh, supplies if you have them um, available. And I will do as we do uh, each week here online. I'll just offer uh, a prayer first for the bread and pause for a moment uh, and pray for the cup. I would encourage you, um, if you're watching, to, um, to uh, pause the video, uh, stop the recording if you need to, take all the time that you need. Uh, sing a hymn, uh, listen to a hymn, um, feel free to read a scripture from maybe the gospel accounts or certainly uh, where Paul recounts the institution of the Lord's Supper. He records that especially in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 11. And, um, and take the time to remember the Lord. Um, I think it's powerful that the Lord gave us communion, a physical experience uh, to remind us of a spiritual reality. Taste and see, be reminded of the fact uh, that God is good and that the Lord is present with us um, each and every day that we live. We'll go ahead and pray for the bread uh, and then we'll pause and pray for the cup. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for this day. We're so thankful for the opportunity to experience your goodness from day to day. And we see that goodness manifested in such a unique way and, and such a needed way for us in the death of your son. We ask that as we take this bread, we could be reminded of his body that was given for us and that we might um, take it in a way that uh, brings that um, pain, that suffering to mind, uh, but also the praise and honor that he is due. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's pray also for the cup at this time. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're likewise thankful for the cup, uh, for what it represents to those of us who are believers and followers in Jesus as we see the blood that was given on the cross for the sins of the world. Lord, we ask that you would open our minds to remember and to proclaim the Lord's death, to see the eternal importance of what took place at the cross. And in taking this each week and each time we gather, we proclaim his death until he comes again. 
It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, so good to uh, see each one of you uh, here online and to have the opportunity to be together uh, in this way. Reminder, we will be at the building uh, at 9 a.m., Lord willing, uh, here in a little while uh, to share in our Bible study time together. Our children's classes will meet. Our, our age-divided classes will meet. They're all going to be studying uh, various aspects of uh, God's power and our thankfulness and gratitude uh, today. Uh, and then at 10, we'll have our combined worship together. And following that, we'll move up to the Civic Center. Uh, at 9, there'll also be an adult class. We'll be talking about the power of prayer uh, and our gratitude for that power uh, in the book of James together. So uh, come and be with us at 9 and 10. Uh, today, remember, no 5 o'clock service uh, tonight. Let me mention um, a few announcements that we have, uh, updates on folks who are struggling with different things, uh, and uh, some things to celebrate as well. Uh, today, Sunday, uh, November 3rd, is Lenny Humphrey's uh, birthday. Uh, she reminded us of that last week, and so we want to uh, mention it again. Uh, it's Lenny's birthday, and uh, we're thankful for her and her sweet family, and want to celebrate them uh, today. Uh, coming up this week on November 6th, that's Wednesday, uh, Paul Caltagirone will have his birthday. Paul's a little bit older uh, than six, uh, but Paul will be celebrating his birthday that day. And then on uh, on uh, Saturday, uh, November 9th, McKinney Caltagirone uh, will be having his birthday. So uh, we'll have Dad on Wednesday the 6th, and then uh, McKinney will be on Saturday uh, the 9th. And we certainly want to uh, wish Paul and McKinney both a happy birthday uh, this week. Uh, we do have several new updates from our missionary families. We mention them in prayer uh, each week, of course, and, and we try to print out or, or email uh, as you prefer the updates. Um, definitely some updates with uh, the Taylor family. Been as we've mentioned, uh, some baptisms recently in the congregation there at Masudo in Japan. Uh, and so we're thankful for that. I want to celebrate that. And uh, an update from them. Uh, also some updates from uh, uh, some folks getting ready to fundraise and get ready for uh, 2025 and continue on in their work. And so we have those at the building. As far as church news um, and, and different things that have been happening, we've had several of our um, students who've been uh, awarded different uh, awards in the past week, uh, both uh, with the end of the uh, six weeks with elementary uh, and as well with the middle school and high school. And so we'll announce some of those in person today and we certainly want to be uh, mindful of them. If you have an update uh, that needs to be shared, uh, just let us know and we'll try to share that in person uh, or online uh, as needed. I do want to update you about some folks who are um, struggling with health uh, and and trials of various kinds with, with their physical health and uh, situations they're facing. Larry Irvin, uh, who we announced uh, last week would be having uh, a bypass surgery. They're actually going to uh, go in this week on Thursday, uh, Lord willing, at St. Thomas uh, West in Nashville, and he will have some stents done. Uh, they're hoping that that will be effective uh, and will not have the, the long-term recovery time uh, that that more extensive operation would have. So they're going to start with stents, and hopefully that will be uh, just what Larry needs and will be helpful uh, for him. So remember Larry uh, and Jennifer this week uh, as they're uh, facing that. Uh, also, want to remember Judith Bradbury. She had an outpatient procedure uh, last week and is recovering at home. Um, um, just uh, want to continue to remember her. I was able to visit with her uh, yesterday, and she's improving. And want to remember Judith. And, of course, want to continue to remember uh, Lee Quinn this week as well. I uh, want to continue to remember Gail Barker, who is uh, gaining some strength. And, and want to continue to remember Gail as she's been dealing with some, some health issues. Also, uh, Gail's sister-in-law, uh, Don's sister, Barbara uh, Castleman, is having a hard time with her health uh, at this time, and we want to remember her, uh, Barbara Castleman, in our prayers this week. Uh, Greta Hughes is improving and gaining some strength. I was able to visit with, with Greta this week, and uh, she's improving uh, day by day and gaining some strength and thankful for that and the progress that she has made there. Uh, we also want to remember Pam English. Uh, Pam went uh, this past Thursday 
uh, and she'll be taking a new medication for her heart uh, and is also going to do another uh, long-term heart monitor test. And so uh, they've had some issues with the technology aspect of that, um, but they're gonna get that set up and uh, she'll be taking that over several weeks to monitor uh, what's going on with her. And we certainly want to remember her uh, and Randy as well at this time, as they're both uh, dealing with a lot of health issues uh, still. Uh, Carolyn McIntyre uh, will have another follow-up on Tuesday with her eye. She's had a little bit more trouble with that, and uh, but uh, doing doing okay. And I was able to talk with her uh, last night, and she is. Uh, they're hoping to be at services today in person, so we want to continue uh, to remember Carolyn and also Lanny, uh, Lanny uh, McIntyre, uh, who is having um, um, continued health challenges and is taking some therapy uh, to get some more strength and movement. And want to continue to remember. Uh, Lanny at this time. I want to remember Miss Jimmy Go Parham as well, who's uh, still recovering from a fall and doing better and has been able to be at services. Please continue to remember uh, Burnell McLean as well as Mr. Darrell uh, as with the health challenges that they face. Uh, Casey Hughes has been in the hospital um, in Jackson but is now uh, going for rehab and um, uh, trying to get some strength back as well. I want to remember Miss Roberta Parker. Uh, that's Andrew Hughes' mother. Uh, she's there at the Bells Assisted Living. I want to continue to remember Vicki Whitworth, uh, the friend of Betsy Robinson. Uh, Miss Faye Robinson um, has been experiencing some falls but is doing um, better and is at home. I want to continue to remember Brenda K. Burris. That's Greta Hughes' sister uh, as, as well. I want to uh, mention that we pray have prayed especially for Robert Boyd Parker. Uh, that's Andrea's dad. Uh, who lives down in Fayette County in Somerville. And uh, he had had some pretty extensive tests done uh, to try to rule out some things with his health and got a good report from those uh, this past week. And I was able to talk with Andrea and uh, they were thankful for that. And I uh, want to continue to remember him uh, and his wife, Barbara, as they're uh, dealing with his health challenges uh, right now, but thankful for that, thankful for that good news uh, on that front. Uh, we want to continue to remember those in our community who are dealing with sickness. There's large numbers of that. Uh, we have a lot of folks who are traveling also. Um, obviously, we remember our country and our community this week uh, as the election arrives Tuesday. Remember all those who are working uh, in the election uh, as well as, of course, the candidates and our country and community as a whole. Uh, I will be glad to see the signs down. Uh, and uh, I know we're hopeful for... Um, some good results there um, that will uh, that will help us to, to move forward. Uh, we also want to remember those who are um, dealing with natural disasters. I've talked with my friend online who's in North Carolina, and I know others of you have talked to family members and friends as well, and there's obviously lots of long-term uh, cleanup and recovery that's happening there, and we want to continue to remember those folks uh, in our prayers. Uh, I hope that you will be able to be with us today uh, for Fall Family Day. If you're watching this, first thing, I'm filming it um, uh, and trying to get it up early, early, uh, so we can get out and face the day together. Um, but if you're able, um, come and be with us. Um, if you're worshiping somewhere else and you get out and you say, ah, I wish we could have been in both places, come and eat with us. We would love to have you. Uh, we'll have our worship at uh, 10 a.m. Our classes will be before that at 9. Uh, classes for all ages, worship at 10. Uh, meal will begin 11, 11, 15 uh, at the Dresden Civic Center. Come magnify the Lord with us. That's what we want to do. To taste and see that he's good, to celebrate, even in the midst of the darkness, even in the midst of the trial and the despair and the, and the hardships. Um, he's good and he does good um, and he's worthy of our praise. Let's pray together uh, and head out into this uh, big week for all of us. Big day at Lebanon, big week uh, in our world. Let's pray together. Our Lord and Father, we're thankful for this day, for all the many blessings that you give us and continue to give us. Lord, help us to see that you're good. Help us to experience that, not just in uh, knowing it in our minds, but feeling it in our experience of being able to trust it, to lean into it uh, in good times and bad. Help us to know that you love us and you long to be with us and you long for us to praise and to glorify you in community with one another. Strengthen us today. Help us to have a fun, safe um, day that is full of fellowship and joy and worship. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, come see us at Lebanon today.